Hello, welcome to Angie's Lot Life. Today I'm going to talk about something that happened a couple of weeks ago when I was in the Afro Hair and Beauty Shop. So as usual, if you're subscribed and you've come back to join me, thanks again. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. So if you watched my previous video, you'll know that I went to a professional salon to get my hair bleached. The hair salon is at the back of an Afro hair and beauty shop. So you walk through to the back of the shop to get to the hair salon. So when I finished getting my hair done, I decided to stop and get a couple of hair bands because otherwise I'll just end up ordering stuff online and it's like, hey, I'm in the shop, might as well. So I actually picked up a couple of the thicker um, hair bands because you know when you've got locks, you're not really supposed to use the thin ones on your hair. So I picked up about five of those and then I went to pay for it. And the lady at the counter is the lady that's always there. She's a Muslim lady. She wears a scarf, very smiley, very warm. So I go to pay for it and she's putting it in the bag and stuff all is well and then she picks up something from the counter puts it into the bag and she kind of smiles and she's like this is for you and i'm like thinking oh it looks like a little tub so it must be some hand cream some moisturizer you can always do with a little mini size moisturizer in your bag so i was like oh that's lovely always love a bit of moisturizer and it's free so that's nice nice touch and back so also, I was rushing back at this point to get back to my car because I would paid for parking and I was coming to the end of the time. The hairdresser was even going to put me under the dryer because my hair was still wet and I was kind of like, oh no, my parking, I need to go. So I'm paying for these things, ready to go, not really trying to stop and look too much at this freebie that I've got, which I thought was just regular moisturiser. So when I get to my car, I'm like, oh, let me have a look at this. Because I get back and I'm like, oh, I've got two minutes left on the meter. I can just kind of stop and have a look. So I pick up the moisturizer. And by the way, I kept it because I was like, I need to make a video about this. Pick up the moisturizer. And I'm now looking at what it actually says. And funnily enough, looking at it now, I can see it says it in English at the bottom. But what I first saw was the French for some reason. It says, les éclaircissants. Eclaircissant means brightening um, and actually the brand is Bright Express not that I'm trying to promote this brand at all by the way because I ain't used this stuff I don't... so obviously now I'm like hold on a minute skin lightening cream oh I don't, I don't need skin lightening cream so then I'm now confused because I'm like why was she smiling looking like she was doing me a favor when she was putting this in the bag like she literally was like oh this is for you like you, you'll appreciate this you need this and I'm sitting there going skin lightening cream I don't do I I don't skip, I don't like in my skin. So when I'm like, hold on a minute, does this woman think that just because I bleached, I went to bleach my hair that I want to bleach my skin? Like, is there some sort of confusion? So obviously I'm pissed now. I'm like, I don't even want this freebie. And obviously had I seen it at the time that she's given it to me, I would have gone, sorry mate, I don't like in my skin and I don't think you should be selling this. As I was about to make this video, I'm like, hold on a minute. Isn't skin lightening cream illegal? So I know it's illegal in, in quite a few um, African countries, definitely illegal in Ghana, but I didn't really pay that much attention as to whether, I've never really paid that much attention to whether it's illegal here because I don't really, I don't buy skin lightning cream. I think the only reason why I know about Ghana is because people have forward WhatsApp messages about the whole skin lightening thing. But I don't really, I know that there was a stage when you would see loads of skin lightening creams when you go into the Afro hair and beauty shop, but I know that's kind of stopped. So I'm like, hold on a minute. After I Googled it, I'm like, so this is illegal as well. So not only is she perpetuating this beauty standard of lighter is better, but she's also knowingly sharing this item that is actually illegal. So now I'm just pissed, but obviously my parking's about to run out and I'm not really trying to get a ticket for this woman. Obviously once I got home and told my husband, he was like, you should have got out, cussed her out, <laughs> told her about herself so that she knows and it's not right for her to be pushing this on people. But for me, I was like, I'm not really about to get a ticket over this woman. Like that's just, I'm just not gonna do that. But I think for what was more 
frustrating for me. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a 38 year old woman. I'm, you know, grown up enough to know what is good and what is bad. What concerns me more is that if I was a young, impressionable teenager and somebody's given you this, this could be the start of somebody damaging their skin by applying this cream. This, and bear in mind this extra lightning cream, which the audacity of the woman to give me extra lightning cream. So if a, if a teenager had been given this, this could be the start of a slippery slope where they're now lightening their skin because, you know, as much as I'm cussing this woman, we know that colorism is, it's there everywhere you look, you know, whether it's looking at the music videos, you know, Beyonce, Rihanna, for example, there is that kind of preference towards the lighter skinned black woman in movies. You know, there's always that kind of like the man's allowed to be dark skin and the woman needs to be light skin. We, we see it everywhere. We know what's going on. And we know the message that is being put out there. So if a young impressionable girl is, is kind of ingesting all of those messages and then this is another message that comes her way, without that confidence from parents telling her that you know what, you're perfect as you are, you don't need to change, your skin is beautiful, don't bite into this message that lighter is better, my concern is that there's going to be a lot of young girls out there that are trying to damage their skin with skin lightening. If somebody came and offered that to my child, I would be pissed because I'm here instilling in her that she's great, she's beautiful as she is, you know, showing her loads of images of black women that are successful and all of this kind of thing. And then you're going to come in with your messaging about the fact that she needs to lighten her skin. So I think for me, that was more the upsetting thing is that it could be some, it could not be me it themselves, be. it could be somebody else who is looking for that recognition from, you know, the wider society. The other thing I think is that colorism seems to be stronger, well, I wouldn't even say stronger because I know in the black community, you know, there are groups of people that buy into it quite a lot, unfortunately. But I also wonder whether it's a little bit more prominent in like some of these Asian cultures mm -hmm. I feel like in certain cultures, you know, we have colorism as an issue within the black community, but then you've got these other cultures who have colorism presented in a different way with different, slightly different set of rules, but it all boils down to the same thing, which is that lighter is better. Is, I guess what I'm saying is she's not some isolated person that's just happened to be doing this. This is something that we know is out there in society. And I just think it highlights the fact that we need to make sure that young people, particularly young girls, are, to are being told all the time that they are beautiful as they are and they do not need to buy into this. It actually reminds me of a video that popped up in my YouTube um, feed a couple of days ago. I think the YouTube is called Steph, I think her channel is called Stephco and she talks about pretty privilege. Now. When, she, when I watched that video, I could relate to parts of it because I do think that, you know, there definitely is a certain section of black men in the UK that definitely buy into the idea that lighter is better. So she, when she's talking, she, if you watch the video, she talks about the fact that, um, you know, she feels invisible around men. But where my experience differs from hers is that she was talking about it in the sense that that's how she feels all the time. Whereas my experience was always that, yes, there was certain groups of men that were very much into, um, you know, light-skinned women, but then I, was, I always came across other men that appreciated dark-skinned women. So where she felt, I guess where I would maybe feel invisible with certain types of men, I could ha feel completely the opposite, you know, in a different setting with other men that m are more appreciative of dark skin, you know, a bit of dark chocolate, basically. Um, and I, for some reason, I think that's what's missing from her experience. I'm not quite sure. People were saying it's because she's in LA. Not really sure what it is. I've been to LA, but I'm not sure whether that's um, her issue. It's definitely something that as a dark skinned woman you encounter. So anyway, that's my, that's my story, that's my experience. I just thought I would share that because it's important that we educate young people that they don't need to buy into this idea that they're not good enough and they need to change their skin. So let me know your comments uh, below on this topic. For the people that came just to check out the hair, here's a close up of this hairstyle that I'm rocking. I've just done a little roll at the front.
as usual if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and for the ogs thanks for coming back and watching